Hi, this is Roger from Kanker Labs, and today uh, I want to discuss this little amp hour counter which I got from eBay. Um, it was recommended on another YouTube channel uh, to be quite useful, and uh, I needed this because I want to do an extensive test on this battery tester which I got several years ago, which was also recommended in a forum and which claims that it can not only test the charge status of any kind of battery uh, you get, but also that it can measure the charge status of rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries. And um, I never was really sure how good this thing was, so I'm at the moment uh, preparing an extensive test with a lot of different batteries, which will probably take a few years. But anyway, it has a patented method of measuring the capacity of uh, different batteries, and you can even download uh, the f whole patent with a Google search. So um, this thing will be in another videos in probably next month, depending on how long it takes. Um, but uh, to find out the remaining charge of any primary or rechargeable battery, I wanted this little thing here. And I will just explain you what you get and what it does. Um, you get basically here this blue, blue module plus two power resistors, each 7.5 ohms, 5 watt. So, so these come quite handy to give you, depending if you use one of them, two of them in parallel, or as here, two of them in series. Uh, this gives you a lot of uh, useful discharge resistor values for a lot of uh, battery values and what you still need is a external 5 volt power supply here connected with a micro USB either to your PC or to a 5 volt uh, wall ward adapter and uh, I've already as you can see uh, soldered together a lot of battery holders from uh, AA uh, AAA, C, D cells and a few uh, coin cell holders. So, but now um, this thing claims to have an accuracy of 1% concerning the voltage, 1.5% concerning the current and thereby in the end around 2% in the measured amp hours or milliamp hours value. Now I've put in, as you can see, a C cell and when you start it or connect it to power, it first of all displays the measured battery voltage. Then you can set the cutoff or termination voltage with the plus and minus push buttons. So it, it automatically guesses a reasonable discharge value here in this case 1.2 of course, alkaline batteries should be discharged to 0.9 or 0.8 volts. And when you press OK, it confirms this. And then it cycly displays the measured amps, the measured voltage and the accumulated amp hour or milliamp hour. It can measure up to, I think, 1000 amp hours. And uh, the limitations are uh, the maximum input voltage is 12 volts, uh, but I think 15 volts for a fully charged lead acid or uh, lithium cell uh, is still okay. And the maximum current is 3 amps that it can measure. And there's the first thing I, I was wondering, well, 3 amps with 1 milliamp resolution, therefore you need at least a 12-bit ADC in your microcontroller and uh, the same for the voltage if it has a re resolution of 10 millivolts up to no f for the voltage probably 10 bit would be okay so that is possible of course because you get a lot of micros today with a 12 bit ADC but look closely 
we have 15 ohms discharge resistors as a load resistor and we have a 1.5 volt cell so this should give around 100 milliamps and what do we see 138 39 so this is around 30 or 40 percent off and i think there is something seriously wrong with the way they are measuring uh, the current here so uh, let's take a closer look at the analog circuitry and I will just change the zoom mode so that we can look a little bit closer onto this module. So for some uh, extra explanation how this thing works, uh, you can see during the measurement cycle it alternately displays uh, the measured voltage, the accumulated amp hours or milliamp hours value and the uh, momentarily measured current and when it's ready and it's ready when it reaches the cutoff or termination voltage uh, then it uh, stops and it only flashes the accumulated amp hours uh, value so that's quite handy uh, you can leave this thing alone overnight let your battery a discharge and when you come back uh, you see the displayed value and now let's take a closer look at the analog circuitry I will just readjust the focus um, uh, so um, you have extra terminals for your discharge resist the resistor these are the two outer terminal blocks and the middle ones that is where your battery is connected and here what is marked as 8205 that is a dual low RDS on MOSFET so uh, this thing switches uh, by the way what I forgot when it's read ready with the measurement uh, it switches off the MOSFET so before and after the measurement uh, your battery is not loaded so it's controlled with this uh, dual MOSFET and directly above that you can see the shunt resistor for the current measurement uh, which has a value of 20 milliohms but uh, if you know anything about shunt resistor you will already notice that this was not a good choice not the value but the type of shunt resistor and here this little black thing is uh, you can already perhaps read 321 this is an LM321 op amp uh, which is the single op amp version of the quad well known LM324. Uh, so it has the same properties but it's uh, just a single LM324 or one fourth of it. A few resistors, a few bypass capacitors, and this here is uh, simply a 3.3 volt analog LDO regulator and where is the micro well it's not underneath underneath there are no more components it must be below the seven segment uh, display at the end i will um, desolder this and take a look at the microcontroller they used so i've already checked the accuracy of the voltage that is quite okay it's just within one percent but we have a problem with the current measurement. So I've already reverse engineered the analog part by uh, tracing out where the connections are um, but before that let's just make a measurement with different currents to see if we only have an offset error so a, a constant milliamps value that is wrong or if we have a slope error that uh, the multiplier is wrong. So let's start with the upper range. Uh, I've connected the two power resistors in parallel so that we now have 3.75 ohms. Um, I've uh, dialed in 10 volts and you can see we're around half a percent off. So that's okay because the voltage measurement doesn't go into the amp hours uh, measurement which is the most important uh, one that we want to measure here. And now let's start the measurement. It suggests a discharge cutoff voltage of 8 volts. And you can see we have, we're seriously off. We are measuring uh, 
2.53 amps around it and we get display 2.6 amps uh, so that's 170 milliamps off uh, quite significantly and now let's go to lower voltages and currents so i've made a quick back on the envelope uh, calculation um, and i came to this formula the displayed current is an offset of 33 milliamps plus the true current times a factor of 1.057 uh, so we have on the one side an offset a constant offset of 33 milliamps and a slope error of 5.7% uh, now these 5.7% could be either by a tolerance of the internal reference of the used microcontroller but I don't think that it is because the measured voltage was within 1% and uh, so this is uh, certainly generated somewhere else and you can also reverse the formula for getting the true current you have to take the displayed current minus 33 milliamps divided by 1.057 and um, this certainly is only applicable for my unit so if you buy the same meter uh, you certainly will have different uh, correction factors but anyway this is way off the 1.5 percent accuracy uh, depending on the the amount of current you measure um, the true value is uh, at least 5.7 percent off and in the lower ranges let's say you're discharging your battery with 50 milliamps uh, you're 33 milliamps out uh, which is uh, an error of uh, 60 or 70 percent so this thing is not totally useless but it's interesting to find out where do these errors come from so i'm quite sure that the scale factor error results from the used shunt resistor uh, it's a standard resistor and not a so-called four terminal shunt resistor with kelvin connections which i will explain now the difference between the two so let's presume you have an ideal shunt resistor of exactly 20 milli ohms you buy a one percent type um, but uh, you still have the resistance of your solder and uh, the PCB traces so at this low sh values of resistance you have to take the parasitic resistances of the solder and the PCB traces and if you measure it here between these you're you're not getting 20 milli ohms but you're measuring in fact with a resistance of 20 milli ohms plus these two parasitic resistance by the tin and the copper resistance uh, from your resistive element to until you finally uh, get your trace to your ADC and how can you get away with it well there are special four terminal shunt resistors and they have internal connections directly at the resistive element so your current comes in here and goes out there and the parasitic um, resistances of any solder or copper traces don't matter anymore because you're connecting 
your ADC directly here at the so-called Kelvin connections. And they are internally exactly at the point where the 20 milliohms or whatever shunt resistance is sitting. So the current is flowing this way. Uh, but your measurement voltage is tapped off here internally inside your component, inside your shunt resistance. And you don't, do not have a common connection here from, your, um, from the connections where you place your measurement current or where you solder it and your... Um, And the traces uh, that go to your ADC or op amp or whatever. Uh, so and that way you get away with uh, with this problem uh, of measuring your resistive element plus the parasitic resistance. So let's see how the analog circuitry uh, behind the shunt resistor works. Now first of all we have of course our battery under test. Let's call it BUT. And this is connected to the screw terminal and the positive side is directly connected to the next screw terminal with our interchangeable load resistor. And below that comes the little dual MOSFET which uh, simply switches the load resistor down to our shunt resistor and then finally to the negative terminal. So, and of course the gate of the MOSFET is controlled by the microcontroller which switches it on or off. Then comes our shunt resistor of 20 milliohms and then Finally, the screw terminal to the negative battery terminal. So, but now comes an interesting point. You might suggest usually here the minus pole, the negative pole of the battery is connected to the circuit ground. But here it's not. It's the upper point of the shunt resistor. And that means our shunt resistor, if we tap off the voltage uh, proportional to our current here at this point uh, this is a negative voltage and we'll see in a minute why they did it that way of course then we need an op amp in the inverting configuration which means uh, via this 330 ohms resistor and a 10k feedback resistor, we get an amplification of minus, so it amplifies times minus, 10k divided by 330 ohms gives minus a factor of minus 30.3. And that way, because this voltage here is negative, we then of course get a positive voltage, we already can see if the maximum measurable current is 3 amps. Uh, this means 60 millivolts here at maximum, the maximum voltage at the sh shunt resistor. So 60 millivolt times 30.3 gives, gives a maximum output voltage of 1.8 one eight volts. Um, so I don't know uh, exactly what is the internal uh, reference of the ADC in the micro they are using, but it must be around this value, perhaps two volt or something like that. Now one point is missing here, the positive terminal. And in the inverting configuration, this is usually connected to ground. We'll see later that here it's not, but let's first of all suppose it's connected to ground. Now remember, uh, first of all, how can we uh, get away with this 5.7% error we got in the scale factor? 
here, um, just quite simply, we have to change the amplification of the op amp slightly by a value of 5.7% now <clears throat> and make it uh, smaller by 5.7%. So we could either increase this resistor with an extra uh, resistor in series, but that's quite difficult to realize in the SMD circuit. Or we could a, um, apply a second resistor in parallel, and that is doable with SMD. We just simple, uh, simply solder a second resistor here uh, in parallel to the 10K resistor. Um, now, if we make this, I've done the, the math before, if we make this 180K, which means 18 times larger, uh, this will reduce the total resistance of the feedback resistor by just the right amount of uh, nearly exactly 5.7%. And that way we get a corrected uh, or adjusted uh, amplification so that we get away by the slightly uh, off value due to the extra resistance of the parasitic resistance here from copper and tin uh, because we don't use a uh, four terminal shunt resistor with Kelvin connections. So that, that would be easy. Now what remains is where does the strange constant offset of 33 milliamps uh, come from? Now let's let's just do a calculation. 33 milliamps. To what voltage does this transfer um, over our shunt resistor? Well, Ohm's law gives us. We just have to uh, multiply the the error term of 33 milliamps by the value of the shunt resistor, 20 milliohms, and we get um, uh, two-thirds of a millivolt, hmm. or 660 microvolts, uh, but slightly less than one millivolt. Hmm. Well, that's a voltage that is near the vo value of the offset voltage that the LM3 um,21 has. According to the data sheet, the offset voltage is 2 millivolts, of course plus or minus, um, typical, and a maximum of 7 millivolts. Uh, so uh, 660 microvolts, or two-thirds of a millivolt, this is quite near to the offset voltage. Now, how how does this come into play? Well, when we connect the positive terminal directly to ground as the usual connection in the inverting configuration, then we get this offset voltage here, developing here, uh, its effect. And um, that would explain, or that does explain, and I'm quite sure that it's exactly the, the culprit, um, the op amp that we have in our circuit does have a very good offset voltage of only 0.66 millivolts, uh, but th that means that this point here is not at virtual ground, it's, uh, it's 0.66 millivolts off, and this simply translates to an error term of 33 milliamps here, or of course multiplied by 30.3, um, the equivalent offset voltage here. And now there comes an interesting point. The real configuration here at the positive terminal it does not go to ground. There is a voltage divider connected and the upper terminal is connected to the 3.3 volt um, from the DC voltage regulator then comes a 510K resistor, and the lower resistor has a value of 330 ohms. 
And if you do the math, let's uh, let's calculate what at what what voltage the positive terminal of the op amp is. So we have 510k divided by 330 ohms plus one. And so we have the 3.3 volts are divided down by a factor of 1,546. And this gives, times 3.3, this gives 2.13 millivolts. So let's round this to 2 millivolts. And I think the engineer who made this circuit, he thought, well, if the op-amp has a typical offset voltage of 2 millivolt, I just subtract this here by lifting the positive um, reference uh, terminal here just by the right amount of 2 millivolts. And this would, in theory, have the effect that if we indeed would have 2 millivolts offset voltage, um, that our uh, offset that we observed here um, is cancelled out. Now, there is one error in, in the train of thought that if that was the intention, and I can't think of any other way why you put two millivolts here at the positive terminal. First of all, the offset voltage can of course be plus or minus two millivolt. And secondly, typical means it could be anywhere between plus and minus two millivolts. And the maximum would be pl between plus and minus seven millivolts. Uh, so if you really want to trim out the offset voltage here, first of all, you would have to make one of the two resistors trimmable and you would have to connect the negative terminal to minus 3.3 volts so that it can trim between the maximum possible values between plus 7 millivolts and minus 7 millivolts. And, uh, well, this is of course totally wrong here what, what is done. Uh, usually in uh, single op amps you have an extra terminal uh, to trim out the offset voltage via a 10 turn port uh, but this SMD version uh, has only five connections uh, the output plus and positive and negative terminal and the power supply connections and uh, uh, they have no terminal for trimming out and the second reason why they didn't make it trimmable with a 10 turn port is first of all the extra cost and second if you design your circuit for manufacturing you try to avoid any kind of manual adjustment so there would have to be a little Chinese woman uh, and taking every every little PCB connected uh, to a multimeter and trim out uh, at the 10 turn port the true offset and anyway so this is totally wrong how it's done. Well, is, is there a way we could uh, really trim out this voltage? Yes, we could. Uh, but, but before that, what I don't understand, they could, make, they could make the scale factor error and the offset error, they could make trim it out in software. So uh, we already have three push buttons and it would be quite easy uh, to go into uh, a kind of set mode uh, where you manually input uh, the scale factor or w w you input, for example, one amps of current exactly and press a button and then it nulls out and you input another current of, let's say, 10 milliamps and it could calculate the, the offset and the scale factors uh, in software by, by a simple two-point adjustment procedure. And that would be, first of all, exact. Uh, and secondly, um, it's, it doesn't cost anything. Um, so I don't know 
why they didn't do it in software, but that is something I not the first time observed in, in Chinese circuits. They have only a kind of half or two-third knowledge of electronics. This is basically a clever idea, but uh, they didn't know the workings of an op-amp and how to trim out offsets uh, the right way, so uh, this simply doesn't work and made totally wrong. And either a software trim or if we would make it trimmable either here at this point with a 10 turn trim pot, then if we are lucky and the offset is in, in the right direction, uh, we could really trim out uh, manually the offset uh, or um, because we only have a positive voltage here um, we could also try to add a voltage here at this node um, but anyway not not the way how this uh, should be done they could have gotten away just with choosing a four terminal shunt resistor they could have gotten away with the scale factor error and by choosing a precision op amp with uh, let's say 10 microvolts offset but there, there is of course a cost factor uh, such a four terminal shunt resistor may cost a uh, dollar and a precision op amp may also cost another dollar and so uh, this thing wouldn't be available anymore for five euros. It would cost seven or eight euros or dollars. Whoa, but then you would have a really good measuring instrument and not such a crap as here. So this is, even if, if I finally can manage to get the circuit modified so that the errors are trimmed out, that is, not the way this is uh, done and it's quite annoying because the rest of the circuit is quite well done for such a low price. The software is quite okay but this is again a thing I can't understand. Uh, who builds such circuits? What are they teaching at the university? Uh, what is written in their books about op-amps? Really can't understand it. How? somebody constructs such a circuit. So anyway, what's to be left is let's see what's below the LCD and uh, if we find a quartz crystal inside. So here we have what was hidden uh, beneath below the LCD. Um, this one here, this is a dedicated LCD driver for a seven segment four digit it is an tm1650 so i don't know why they choose an extra lcd driver usually you can drive in multiplexed mode this just directly from the pins of your micro um, and this here is the microcontroller. It's an STM8S003F and this is a low-cost um, microcontroller from uh, ST and we cannot see any quartz crystal anywhere. So uh, it is obviously working on its internal RC oscillator and that one only has an accuracy of 5%. Furthermore, we do not have an internal reference. So they are obviously taking uh, just the 3.3 volt here from the voltage regulator, which is uh, probably only uh, accurate to, let's say, 5%. So what, let's... Uh, just measure uh, which voltage our 3.3 voltage regulator gives, which apparently serves as also the reference for the ADC. And it gives 3.31 volts. 
Uh, so that's uh, quite good. That is uh, better than 1%. Uh, quite surprising. So that's the reason why the voltage measurement is not uh, less than 1% out of range, uh, out of accuracy, but there remain the problems with the uh, current measurement. Um, furthermore, we ha only have a 10-bit ADC, so that way I'm not sure how they wa will achieve uh, the specified accuracy of... Uh, one, not only 1.5%, but measuring down to one between 1 milliamps and 3 amps with 1 milliamp resolution. Well, the, the voltage of the battery, that's the lesser problem. Uh, you can divide it down by two different uh, voltage dividers and uh, then depending on how high the voltage is, uh, either feed into the analog multiplexer in front of the ADC you either feed in the voltage from one resistor divider or from the other. Uh, but anyway, uh, they ca I don't see any way how they can achieve the specified accuracy, neither in the uh, apart from the measurement errors uh, due to the wrong shunt resistor and due to the uh, bad offset compensation, etc. Um, they, I can't see how they can achieve uh, a resolution of 1 milliamps up to a uh, maximum current of 3 amps. And uh, we ha still have a, an additional 5% error in the measured uh, milliamps hours or amp hour by the tolerance of the internal RC oscillator. So we'll just m simply measure the milliamps hours extra to see uh, how good the results are, but this really is, uh, just to save some cost, this is really a totally bad design, boasting an accuracy that this thing simply doesn't have. So, during the desoldering of the 7 segment display, as you can see, we've lost our most significant digit. Uh, that is because uh, I accidentally desoldered also a VIA when pulling this thing uh, out. But it's uh, not important. Uh, I have another one uh, at hand at, or at home and this thing do doesn't cost uh, anything. Uh, so how do we measure uh, the accuracy of the timing? Uh, well, I've dialed in a constant current from my power supply so that the displayed value um, is exactly uh, 1000 milliamps or 1 amp. You can see, remember the most significant digit is missing, so that this would be a 1 here. So we just uh, time um, a certain period and uh, then compare the displayed value of the milliamps hour with the time. And because we know the current, we can uh, see how much it is off. So let me start this thing here in sync with a stopwatch and then we just wait and uh, for t a few minutes and compare the results. So I've stopped the measurement exactly after 10 minutes. Now 10 minutes is one sixth of an hour and when we dialed in a displayed current of 1 amp, we should get 1 6 of an amp hour, uh, which translates to, when we do it in milliamp hours, uh, this should be give 167 milliamp hours. And what do we get displayed? I don't know, this is flashing here now very fast. I don't know how it records on the camera. Anyway, it displays 227 milliamps. And that is an uh, error of 27%. So how is that possible? Uh, not only do we get this offset error in the measured current, the scale factor error. Now we have a 27% error in 
just the timing how is that possible now this thing is really totally crap everything done wrong it could in theory be that during the desoldering and resoldering of the seventh segment display <laughs> that anything else went wrong but if they are using the internal rc oscillator well it can't be uh, out by 27 percent so there's something seriously wrong uh, probably with the firmware and uh, this thing is totally useless unusable crap throw it away even the seven dollars or how how much you pay for it is uh, thrown out of the window money basically it's it's uh, the basic design is quite okay but through the accumulation of hardware and software errors this thing is absolutely useless and i don't want to reprogram and re uh, solder everything just to make it somehow working uh, this thing will get into the dustbin so my verdict don't buy this thing um, and uh, perhaps you can tell me if we if you can get at ebay or aliexpress or whatever uh, something that is uh, has a better accuracy uh, five percent total accuracy would be okay but here we get absolutely no usable result so that was it for today thanks for watching uh, if you liked it please give it a big thumbs up and you can support me on patreon if you want to if you liked the videos and if you want to do me uh, more because all of this is done in my uh, spare time and it takes quite some time to produce such a video and uh, hope to see you next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.